Hey guys, this is Zach here at Performance Trends. And today, I'm going to walk you through example 4.1 in the Engine Analyzer Pro user manual. If you want to follow along, you can find the beginning of this example on page 157. I'm hoping to show you a couple ways to take advantage of our software so that you can make some informed decisions on tuning and modifications to your motors in the future. In this particular example, we're going to use a small block Chevy profile from our Performance Trends engine library. Click on File in the upper left hand corner and then Open Example Engine from Performance Trends. Today, we're going to work with this motor right here. We're choosing to work with a particular motor that is a popular in a restricted class of circle track racing, where the restriction is way too small. An example, this one is a 350 Holly 2 barrel. You can see when we go to calculate performance, we're going to get an error message telling us that our carb or throttle body CFM rating looks to be potentially restrictive for this engine size. Because we know that's actually the case and that's what we want, we're going to go ahead and run calculations anyway. After a pretty quick calculation here, you can see that we have a lot of data to look at. In this section here, we have all the data that changes with RPMs. You can go over here and play with the scroll bar and see that how much data there actually is to look at. Again, this section up here is what we call our tabular RPM data meaning that it does change with RPM. Down below, depending on your calculations, you're also going to have a scroll bar here as well. In this case, we don't. All of this data here is not going to change with RPM. Let's take a look at the graph. As you can see, we just have a standard torque and horsepower graph here. Here you can tell that we're looking at an RPM graph because not only does it say here for the x-axis as a label for RPM, but also up here in the toolbar, RPM is capitalized. This is ensuring that we're looking at an RPM graph. I also want to take note and show you that list and last are lowercase. That's an implication that you're looking at the most recent data that you've just done calculations on. If you were looking at a test from a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks ago, it's possible that one of these would have an uppercase. But because they're both lowercase, we know that this is simply the most recent combination that we just ran. I'd also like to point out the fact that mixed is uppercase. This is telling me that we have two different types of data here. We have torque in this blue line and horsepower in the green line. Let's take a look at that menu. If you ever want to change that, you can go in here and click on Use New Graph Pattern. For example, we'll look at Knock Index and Spark Advance. Let's go ahead and take a look. As you can see here, we have Spark Advance in green, and we have Knock Index in blue. An easy way to go back to that is click on the Mix button again. Now we're going to go ahead and click on Use Save Graph Pattern, and we'll use Torque horsepower versus RPM. Go ahead and click OK and we're back to our original graph. It's easy as that. Now because we know this is a restricted class we're going to go ahead and make some modifications. We're going to simulate installing a 500 Holly 2 barrel with a Victor Jr. intake manifold. This carb is still way too small but it's a popular restricted motor combination for other classes of circle track racing. So let's go ahead and make our six changes and see what happens. I'm going to go back to the main screen. I want to save these results so we can compare them after we've made our modifications to our combination. And we'll go into our intake system specs. The first change we're going to make is change this total CFM rating to 400 
from the original 290. The second change is we're going to change to a single plane manifold type. We're obviously going to have a different runner length and runner size. So we'll calculate the runner head. In this example, I know the width and the height. It's approximately 1.2 inches wide, 2 inches tall, and it has a rectangular shape. You can see this value has changed from 1.7 to now 1.75. We're also going to have a different flow coefficient. In this example, we're going to use 2.5. We can make an assumption like this using table 2.7, also found in your Engine Analyzer Pro user manual on page 26. We're looking at an aftermarket single plane, which is generally between 2 and 3 for the flow coefficient. So in this case, we're going to assume it's 2.5. The runner lengths are generally a little bit smaller also, somewhere between 2 and 6 inches. We're going to make an assumption that we're have four inches here. My last change I'm going to make is no heat. This is because this setup is completely isolated from cool passages, exhaust crossover, and lifter valleys. So there's essentially no heat sources. Finally, I'm going to make a change to my comments so I know exactly what I'm looking at when I come back to this test in a couple of days, weeks, or months. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and click back and OK, and it should save all my settings. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our performance. I'm sure you noticed that we didn't get any messages telling us that our potential for restriction is great. Clearly, we've made some good changes. That certainly looks a lot better there. Why don't we compare this graph to our last set of tests? As you can see here, with the light blue and the red, we have our previous combination. And with the green and the dark blue, we have our most recent combination. Clearly, we've made some significant changes. Let's take a look at what might have actually been contributing factors to these changes. First, we'll take a look at intake vacuum. To show just one type of data on this graph, we'll click on Single and go right here to Intake Vacuum. In the dark blue, we have our current combination, and in the light blue, we have the previous combination. Without these restrictive carburetors required for these classes of racing, this intake vacuum would be well under one inch of mercury. That's typical if the carb was sided for best performance, but in this case, the carbs are used as restrictor plates essentially, so they're obviously going to be significantly higher than that. That being said, you can see with our current tests, we have a lot less vacuum. Let's take a look at another contributing factor, intake tuning pressure. Again, we're going to click on single. Go down here to intake tuning pressure. The intake tuning pressure is the pressure at the intake valve just as the valve is closing. Generally, the higher this pressure, the better performance because it produces a slight supercharging effect. You can see the green line is higher at lower RPMs because the dual plane typically produces better tuning at lower RPMs. However, even with its Higher tuning pressures, the cooler intake charge, and the lower manifold vacuum make the new carb intake better at most all higher RPMs. Lastly, let's take a look at temperature.
As you can see here, demonstrated with the dark blue line of our current combination and the green line with our old combination, our temperatures are a lot better at the intake ports. This is also going to lead potentially to better performance. I hope this video helped you see how you can take advantage of our software so that not only can you make informed decisions on tuning and adjustments to your motors, but also to see exactly why horsepower and torque are potentially increasing or decreasing based on the changes that you've made. This is just one great example we have to offer.